What's going on guys, welcome to the show. Today we are going to be talking about my favorite locations throughout Shenmue. Let me know yours in that comment box below. Let's take a look. This is the first location that the player finds themselves in after the introduction sequence is played out. One of the best things about Shenmue is the amount of detail that is present throughout the environment in the game, which really helps convey a sense of realism to the player as they explore each location. The Hazuki residence is the player's home, and subtle details that are found throughout the house help to paint a picture of what day-to-day -day life is like. You will often find Ine-san in the kitchen preparing a meal, Fukaru-san practicing in the dojo, fish swimming in the pond. Seriously, the amount of detail put into the house really does make it feel alive, and that you as the player are now a part of it. I've experienced many different games that managed to elevate my experience due to the mixing of visuals and audio, but nothing was quite like walking into the martial arts school in Shenmue 2. As soon as the location loads, you are greeted with a path that leads to the master of the school. Whilst walking this path, you are surrounded by many students who are practicing martial arts, and I mean many. The fact that there was this amount of characters on screen at the same time, all practicing in unison, was something really spectacular back in 2001. The sounds of the students practicing in the background whilst you speak to the master really helped to portray the feeling of a martial arts school, and in my opinion goes a long way in respecting the culture. Up until this point in the adventure, the game had focused on the feeling of revenge. Surrounded by sprawling urban landscapes, as a player you are constantly pursuing Land D, which lends a sense of urgency to the entire game. That is until you reach the end of Shamu 2, which introduces a completely foreign environment, as well as a sense of calm that was not present before. Trading in the dull grey buildings of the big city for beautiful landscapes, I found myself more concerned with finding out more about the area than my pursuit of Landy. As many Shamu fans know, this section of the game supplies a lot of juicy information about the mysterious character Shen Hua. She comes across as a calm and confident individual, and this translates to the environment, as you pass through vibrant forests that promote a sense of tranquility, you begin to really feel relaxed. This is one of the reasons that make me so passionate about Shamu and how it can deliver experiences that no other franchise can. You all knew this was going to be on the list, and if you didn't, you should really question your love for Shamu. The Tamao convenience store has become the butt of many jokes, mainly due to its over-the-top music and presentation, but that cannot deter the fact that the location has become such a beloved part of the series, to many of its hardcore fans for this very same reason. Offering many items that will aid you throughout the adventure, such as batteries, music, and food for the cat, you'll find yourself visiting many times throughout the game, and with the opportunity to enter a raffle upon buying something, to possibly acquire some of the game's rarer items is really a proposition you should not pass up. The U Arcade is a fascinating location that accurately replicates an arcade, right down to the dodgy characters who occupy the space. You can decide to take part in many different activities that will see you playing such games as Space Harrier and Hang On, as well as other distractions that include mastering one of the game's mechanics in the QTE punching minigame. As you would expect from the name of the arcade, this location is a hat tip to the legendary creator of the series, Yu Suzuki. As many gamers know, Yu Suzuki is one of those rare creators that has had a hand in pushing the medium forward in directions no one thought it would go. Having the opportunity to play his classic creations within Shamu is another feature that many people would take for granted nowadays, but back in 1999, this shit was magic. During the events of Shamu 2, the Dayuan apartments become an important location that sees you living with Li Xiaotao due to her kindly offering you a place to lay your head. What's special about this location, you ask? It's just an apartment block, mate. Well, what makes this place special to me has to be its music, and that is mainly the reason why it is on this list. Throughout the games, we are presented with some astonishing and deeply thought-provoking music, but this is the track that did it for me. Back in the day, I would purposefully spend time in the apartments just to listen to the sweet sounds of the soundtrack, which completely consumed my need to continue the adventure and instead just take it all in. This is a location you encounter in the first game in which you are able to purchase items for your journey. What makes this store unique is the relationship between its owner and Ryo, clearly someone who has known the Hazuki family for a while and has watched Ryo grow up from a young boy. The owner addresses our hero as baby boy Ryo. Ryo's reaction is priceless, clearly annoyed but utterly respectful of the lady. He replies in earnest without addressing the problem. The store is littered with interesting little details and whilst browsing them, the visuals and music you find playing in the background 
sound really helps to portray the feeling of a small, friendly shop in a Japanese community. Again, contributing to the feeling of being totally immersed in the world and its culture. I absolutely love this location in the game, as it sees us meeting one of my favorite characters, Jian Min. When I'm old, I want to be just like Jian Min, chilling the fuck out in a park practicing Tai Chi. Located in the South Kamen Quarter, the park features a beautiful tree that Jin Min will use to help you understand one of the main tenets of martial arts, to practice every day without neglect. The park emits a calm tone that saw me enjoying each and every encounter I experienced with Jian Min, further pushing my stance on this game being one of the rare titles that transcends gaming and begins to become an entirely different experience than just picking up a controller. One of the earliest locations to be revealed in Shenmue's development, we were introduced to Mammo Temple during Project Berkeley that saw Li Xiaotao practicing outside. Now many things obviously changed up until we had the chance to go there in the second game and actually explore the location for ourselves. Upon entering the temple you are greeted with a huge shrine that represents the religious beliefs of the culture and begin to notice that a lot of work has been put into this location and it truly shows. To the candles gently bouncing light around the room, to the walls covered in soot that you soon find yourself cleaning, you really get the sense that you have just entered a sacred place. A place that is respected by the occupants of the game's world. The temple goes on to become an important part of the game as you briefly help out with the day-to-day -day cleaning of its library. A location in the first game, the New Yokosuka Harbour, presents the player with a living and breathing industrial area that you soon become a part of, once taken on your role as a forklift driver. The only way to get to the harbour in the game is to wait for the bus that will drop you off just outside its entrance. I'll never forget the first time when visiting the harbour and the cutscene that plays upon your arrival. The sounds of the birds squawking in the background, the machinery and bustle of working life is all present. This location is huge and is quite impressive. You'll find stores and familiar faces as you explore the harbour and become familiar with its resident nutjobs, the Mad Angels, who always seem to pop out of the blue to test your fighting expertise in tense battles that take place all over the harbour. Well there you have it guys, those are my favourite locations in Shenmue, I'd love to know what yours are so let me know and as always, I will see you next time.